Factoring trinomials is a skill that um, you should have come across by now in your previous math courses and this is just a refresher on how to do it. And I'm going to do this in two different ways because and there's more than these two different ways to do them and depending on how you learnt it uh, you might prefer one over the other. The first method is the trial and error method and although it's um, sometimes a little bit um, I would say a little bit messy, not as elegant. It's something that students remember easily, and so um, they often fall back to the trial and error method, um, especially if they haven't done any factoring of trinomials in a long time. So the way I do this is I say, all right, I'm the, this is a trinomial because there's three terms, and it's in decreasing order. In other words, the powers are in decreasing order, going from 2 to 1, and this one has no um, x variable. And I ask, what two things can multiply to give me x squared? Well, the x and the x. And then I ask the same question again, what two things can multiply to give you 16? And this is where the trial and error method goes in. It could be 8 and 2, it could be 4 and 4, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to choose 4 and 4. And I can see that there are some negatives needed, and I need to multiply to give me positive 16. So I'm going to make these two negatives. Then I always do a check to make sure I'm right. So x squared, negative 4x, negative 4x, and positive 16. And that simplifies to give me what I started with. So this is my answer. Now the other um, I'm going to do the same thing again with this simple trinomial over here. Um, what two things multiply to give me x squared, x, and x, and what two things multiply to give me positive 6. And um, there's a couple of options, 3 and 2, 6 and 1. I can see that I need some negatives, so I'm going to put negatives on here because negative 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 and they add together to give me negative 5. So I can check it again, I can give you, you should maybe try that, check it and see if you get back to this question here. Now this gets a little bit more complicated when we have complex trinomials. Complex trinomials are numbers that are up front here that aren't one. And so here's when I'm going to do both methods. The first one I'm going to do again just as I did before with the guess and check method. And what two things multiply to give me 2x squared? 2x and x. Really there's only one choice there and I could have written if you're doing it in paper and pencil you could have it written in pen. You know you're not going to have to erase this. Now the negative 2 um, what two things multiply to give me negative 2? Well, it's 2 and 1. And the choice here is where do I put the 2 and where do I put the 1? So I'm going to guess that the negative 2 goes here and a positive 1 goes here because negative 2 times positive 1 is negative 2. Then I check it and I go, all right, that's 2x squared plus 2x minus 2x minus 2. Notice these cancel and I do not end up with what I started with. So something was wrong and one thing that I can try and change is the order of this. So I'm going to put the 2 now in this. Well, maybe I should change color to show it's a completely different example. There we go. This is a 2 and this is a 1. So I've just changed the order of that and again I'm going to check check it out. So that's plus 4x minus x minus 2. And that simplifies to positive 3x. And I want a negative 3x. So I've got the numbers right, I just haven't got the signs right. So I'm going to erase these two signs. And let me put the new ones in pink. So this is the negative and this is the positive. Oh, sorry, that was I didn't change them, did I? <laughs> so this is the positive and this is the negative. And if you multiply that out, you will find that it works. So you can see that the guess and check method is a bit messy and you have to be a little bit patient with yourself 
um, and always go back and check to see if you've got your answer. A more um, formal approach to factoring trinomials is to use decomposition and uh, it's one that m you might have been taught um, in your previous math course. So the, what you do is you say, all right, what multiplies to get you multiply these two numbers together, which is negative 50, and you find all the factors that multiply to give you negative 50. So that is negative 10 and 5, or negative 5 and 10, and um, 25 and negative 2, or neg sorry, 2 and negative 25, and that's about it, I think, or I guess you can do 50 and 1, and negative 1 and 50. So there's three choices there, and you are looking for the choice that will add to give you 23. And so the, add, the two numbers that will add to give you positive 23 is this choice right here. So that means I'm going to break the 23 apart with using these two coefficients. So I'm, it's 10x squared plus 25x minus 2x minus 5. So I've decomposed the 23 into two numbers. Now I'm going to factor by grouping. I'm going to group these two together and take out a 5x and I'm left with 2x plus 5. Notice if I multiply this in you'll get back to the original two binomial here and here I'm going to factor out a negative 1 and that leaves me with 2x plus 5. Now you know you're on the right track when this bracket perfectly matches this bracket. That means they're common and I'm going to factor out that common factor and I get 5x minus 1. So that is how you do decomposition and uh, Kathleen who's going to do some of the other slides coming up she's going to pr predominantly use the decomposition method.